Good evening. I'm Ted Koppel, and this is Nightlines. Donny Osmond and Frank Zappa. This is ABC News Nightline. Reporting from Washington, Ted Koppel. In the world of music videos, tonight's MTV Music Awards ceremony in New York is what the Emmys are to television and the Oscars are to movies. It is the music video industry honoring its own. For the record, no pun intended, Bruce Springsteen won the award for best stage performance, beating out Tina Turner and David Bowie. A number of the songs up for recognition tonight have been receiving a great deal of recognition in recent weeks, and not the most approving kind. Simply stated, a lot of people, and they are becoming increasingly vocal, find the songs and the rock video performances that go with them offensive. Even if your tolerance for explicit language is relatively high, you're quite likely to find them offensive also. Our dilemma in focusing on the subject was this. How explicit were we going to get? Well, we have left out some of the most offensive material, but what's been left in, if John Denver and Frank Sinatra are your speed, is still likely to curl your hair. But understand, these songs are routinely played on radio stations, and if you have cable, more likely than not, your kids have already seen and heard what some of you will see and hear for the first time tonight. Here's Nightline correspondent Jeff Greenfield. We think this subject matter is totally inappropriate, and that's why we're making a fuss. One group of parents has heard more than enough. The Parents Music Resource Center wants a labeling system for albums and tapes, much like movies are rated today. Later this month, a Senate committee will hold hearings on the question. A tribute to the clout of the center, whose members include Susan Baker, wife of Treasury Secretary James Baker. At least the movie industry has given us labels so we can know what we're in for. When we go to a movie, we have some idea. With music, you have none. Her name Nikki. Guess you could say she was a sex fiend. I met her in a hotel lobby, masturbating with a magazine. I'm not saying that I admire most of these lyrics. Journalist Nat Hentel, a passionate civil libertarian. Uh, many of them are, are, are not songs at all. They're just words thrown against the wall. And some of them are kind of disgusting. But who's supposed to decide? Who's, who draws the line? Love for sale. Love for sale. Drawing the line has always been a question. Radio stations banned Cole Porter's love for sale half a century ago. And the great blues singer Bessie Smith had more than her share of outraged critics. Come on and save your mama's soul, cause I need a little sugar in my bowl. Rock and roll has got to go. The obscenity and vulgarity. But it was the arrival of rock and roll 30 years ago, raw, powerful music for black adults that was adopted by white teenagers that really focused outrage. It is a contributing factor to our juvenile delinquency of today. A whole generation of Americans was raised on the belief that the Kingsman's hit, Louie Louie, contained obscene lyrics. An exhaustive FCC study concluded that no matter how the song was played, it was utterly incomprehensible. Yes, rock and roll music has always stirred fear and loathing in the hearts and minds of the elders. In fact, the very phrase rock and roll, like the word jazz, was originally slang for the sex act. But it's also true that the rock music of an earlier time has nothing, absolutely nothing, in common with some of the songs of today. I'm behind that excuse that this is no different. It's very different. Jeff Ling, a minister who works with the Parents Resource Center, listens to and plays rock and roll, but he's concerned about albums like Be My Slave. Inside, there's lyrics like, come on, slap my face, the way you gag me, the way you give me pain. Some women like violent sex, and I think that they have a right to hear about it. Frank Zappa is one of the few rock artists to come out openly against the labeling effort. I mean, if it looks like censorship and it smells like censorship, it is censorship, no matter whose wife is talking about it. It's censorship. Beyond the moral issue, there's a pragmatic question. Will labeling keep offensive lyrics away from children or actually promote sales of controversial songs? Kids go after what's cool. They're going to go to an R-rated movie before they go to a, a PG over a G because it's cool. And if you censor it, it's going to be more cool to buy the uh, 
hardcore lyrics. Later, we'll be joined by pop star Donny Osmond, but next, when we return, we'll talk with Candy Stroud, spokesperson for the parents group that wants to rate pop records. And on the other side of the issue, Frank Zappa, a rock innovator who's never been at a loss for words or music. Among the most successful albums condemned by the Parents Music Resource Center are Dirty Mind by Prince, Twisted Sisters Stay Hungry, which has sold more than two million copies, and Madonna's Like a Virgin, a former number one record which has been on the charts for 41 weeks. This is ABC News Nightline, brought to you by Sears. And the Mothers of Invention. His underground hits carried such classic titles as Susie Cream Cheese, Brown Shoes Don't Make It, and Call Any Vegetable, plus several with lyrics that we'd have trouble quoting. In the early 70s, Zappa and his group were banned from the Royal Albert Hall in London in a dispute over obscenity. Frank Zappa joins us now live in our Los Angeles bureau. And joining us in our Washington studio, Candy Stroud, freelance journalist and spokesperson for the Parents Music Resource Center which is campaigning for a rating system for pop albums and tapes. Frank, give me a sense of limits. Are there any? Well, first of all, I have to correct something you just said. The suit with the Royal Albert Hall was a breach of contract suit, and not an obscenity suit. Okay. okay. Now, let's, now let's move to the subject at hand. Uh, are there limits? Yeah. Should, well, there, should I, there be any kind of limits? Um, yes, I think there should. And uh, those limits that you're talking about for sexual information for children are a matter for parents to decide for themselves. So if parents want to have a better sense, something that in one form or another makes them better educated to make that kind of choice, why stand in the way of it? Because uh, what the PM PMRC is suggesting in terms of remedies for the problem are roughly the equivalent of saying, well, this man has dandruff, so we're going to cure it by cutting his head off. Their, their proposals are really dumb if you take away the, the uh, aroma and look at the mechanics of what they are, and they're also very dangerous in terms of uh, what they can lead to for violating your right to free speech, your right to assemble, because they want to apply the same ratings to live concerts, and uh, the right to due process for people. For example, if you're a songwriter and you have a song included on an album that gets an X, and through no fault of your own, the album is banned from stores or the sales of it are uh, impinged on in some way, you don't have a chance. Uh, the analogy you draw is a colorful one, but why is it any different, for example, than rating movies and saying if you are below a certain age, you can't go to see such and such a movie unless accompanied by adult, and in some cases not at all, unless you are of a certain age? Well, I think that in, in law, when they deal with matters pertaining to the First Amendment, that a lawyer told me this, that you're supposed to look for the least restrictive option and in this case, the least restrictive option would be this, to realize that rock and roll is not written or performed for people with conservative taste. And there's no reason why the morals or the taste buds of somebody who's married to a DC superstar should be a model to impinge on the rights of people who are not children. All right, Candy Stroud, you're a journalist in addition to being a spokesperson for this group, uh, and I'm sure are also concerned about impinging on the rights of free speech. Where do you draw the line? Clearly not in the same direction as, as Frank Zappa. Well, certainly nobody's talking about censorship, uh, Ted. Uh, nobody's talking about taking away anybody's First Amendment rights. Not I yet. think, and never will. Uh, there, oh, come on, Candy. Excuse me, just let me finish. I think what's most important is that parents be given some sort of information as they are given in the movies. We're talking about consumer information, packaging, labeling, so that if a parent goes to a record store, uh, he, and to buy a record for a child, he doesn't come home with a record by Prince that, that contains lyrics about masturbation or incest or oral sex. Candy, you've got a bunch of kids. How many times do you go out and buy records for them? How many times do they buy records for not, themselves? Not often enough as far as my children are I concerned. Don't think, I don't think, I mean, the uh, only reason I make the point is not to draw attention to you, but I don't think most of us buy records for our kids.